Hi, my name is Dennis, and I have obstructive sleep apnea. Hi, Dennis. Listen, it would be an understatement to say that my Philips CPAP changed my life. It saved my life. But now I feel like it might be trying to kill me? That headline might have been a bit of dramatic clickbait. <laughs> but here's the truth of the matter. That's how a lot of us on CPAP feel right now. Um, in case you're stumbling into this unawares, CPAP is continuous positive air pressure, airway pressure, something like that. Continuous positive airway pressure. Yeah. <laughs> and about 40% of us who are on CPAP have machines made by Philips Respironics. <sighs> Philips Respironics announced last week that it is recalling something like three to four million of its machines, not just CPAPs, but also APAPs, BiPAPs, and ventilators. And they're recalling them because the sound abatement foam in these devices, the foam that they put around the motor to keep it from being so loud, uh, turns out is um, degrading, particleizing, sometimes getting sucked into people's lungs, also off-gassing carcinogenic Fumes. Anyway, Philips's advice is if you're on a ventilator, of course, keep using it because if you pull the plug, you're going to die. I mean, that's, I think that's literally what's known as pulling the plug. But if you're on CPAP, stop using it. Call your doctor. <sighs> well, here's the thing. My AHI, which is a number that everyone on CPAP knows, that's my apnea hypopnea index. It's a calculation of how many times I stop breathing in an hour without CPAP. My AHI is 80.3, which means without my machine, I stop breathing for more than 10 seconds, on average 80 times an hour. When I had my sleep study, the sleep tech told me, Look, if your life is really in danger here, we will stop your sleep study after three hours and put you on CPAP. He stopped my study after an hour because he said, I'm literally watching you die. So I'm not exaggerating when I say this machine has saved my life. I was told I probably would not see another Christmas without it. And now Phillips is telling me, Hey, you need to stop using it. For how long? I don't know. What's the risk? I don't know. Okay, my machine's pretty new. Is the foam in it degrading? I don't know. They're not really telling us anything. They announced last week that there was a recall and that more information would be coming soon. Thursday of last week, they opened up a website to where you could register your device, put in your serial number, your contact information, how you wanted to be contacted. And that's it. No confirmation email, nothing. Here's the frustrating thing. You would think a medical company who is making machines that are life sustaining would have gotten in touch with all of its customers to say, hey, this machine might be killing you. There's an app that goes with my Dream Station CPAP. It's called Dream Mapper. It's a Philips app. It's got messaging capabilities. Philips has my email address. They have my phone number. They send me a report every day of how long I use their machine and how well treated I am on average. If they really wanted to let me know, they could have sent a message in the app. They didn't. They could have sent me an email. They didn't. They could have called me. They didn't. I found out on Reddit, I think. <sighs> That's bad enough, but the messaging sense has been even worse. You call Phillips and you're like, how long is this going to take? I don't know. The CEO of Phillips said in an interview or 
No, I think it was a call to investors that they expected the recall process, the repair or replacement to take a year. That's leaving a lot of us high and dry because our insurance companies will only pay for a device once every five years, most of us, in the US at least. Well, I got my machine in February. I'm not due for a new one for quite a while. Called my insurance. Hey, do you guys know the machine was recalled? Like, I need a new machine, probably. I don't know, maybe? And they were like, okay, well, you're due for a new one in uh, mm, uh, February of 2026. Hang on. Seriously? <sighs> anyway, the only thing we really know other than that is that Philip seems to be penning the blame on ozone cleaners, which is kind of funny because you don't use ozone cleaners on ventilators, but they're saying unapproved cleaning devices like ozone cleaners can cause the foam to degrade faster. Okay, how much faster? I don't know. <laughs> Here's the other kicker. Um, they also say that it can be caused by living in a hot and humid environment. Hi, my name is Dennis, and I live in the armpit of Alabama. Hi, hey, man, I'm free bird. Anyway, the funny thing is, all of this just sort of feels like a really extreme version of what CPAP users go through all the time. You're prescribed CPAP. They send you to an office. They say, here's your machine. Here's your mask. Push the button. Go to sleep. And that's kind of it. It makes sense that 50% of people who are prescribed CPAP and who really need it fail within the first year. They just stop using it because it's not working. <sighs> Their doctors aren't really helping them. Their DMEs aren't really helping them. Thankfully, there's some really great support groups, great forums, great YouTube channels. Not everybody's going to find those. Anyway, that's kind of why I'm starting this channel, just to boost the signal, just to get the message out there and to increase the number of people who are giving support to people who are on CPAP. Like I said, there are some really great YouTube channels, but here's the thing. Most of them are operated by people with skin in the game. They're either durable medical equipment providers, DME, their sleep techs, their sleep doctors, somehow they're related to the field. They're making money from this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Um, there's a great polysomnographic technologist named Lanky Lefty 27. And without his videos, I kind of think I would have given up by now. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with professionals in the field making videos for YouTube. What I'm saying is there need to be more people like me who are just normal dudes or dudettes, whatever. Everybody's a dude to me who are going through this struggle, who are trying to figure it out, who are stumbling into what works and what doesn't, who are finding out ways to adjust our own therapy, who are searching for the perfect mask, who don't really know how to clean our machines or anything really. So yeah, what I hope this channel is, is um, sort of an interesting um, view into my journey with CPAP as a relatively new user. I'm gonna be sharing information about the things I've learned, the tips and tricks, what to do, what not to do, the things you need to buy that they don't tell you you need to buy, how to find the right mask, all of this. Um, and I'm probably going to make some mistakes, but I'm going to be making them out loud. Like I said, if you're new to CPAP and you're trying to figure all of this out, come along on this journey with me. But most importantly, if you're on a Philips CPAP and you're freaking out right now, I understand why. Their handling of this has been horrible. Their messaging has been non-existent. But we'll figure this out. If I hear any updates about what's happening, I'll let you know. Um, until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.
Oh, by the way, before we go, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to my friend Brent Butterworth. Um, his band, Take Two, has a new album coming out. And the intro music that you heard in the opening credits and the music that you're hearing now is the first track from that album. Uh, he agreed to let me use the music in my uh, YouTube channel, and I'm eternally grateful. I don't think it's out quite yet. When it is out, it'll be on Spotify and Apple Music. I'll put links below. And you can check it out. Um, but until next time, guys, let's figure it out because nobody's helping us with us.